Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be doing a two-part series on the Dornier 10, as the DOX if you prefer. This is a very, very unique airplane, and again, it's great that we get opportunities to fly silly things like this, on account of the fact that it's just, it's different, and it's an involved plane to get started, it's an involved plane to fly, but it's actually surprisingly not that bad to control, and you'll see what I mean once we get started. Speaking of which, let's get started. So the purpose of our first video here is going to be walking you through where everything is, kind of how to use some of the systems, and then the next video will be dedicated to actually operating the aircraft itself, because there's just so many, many, many things going on inside this plane. So when you first climb in, uh, the thing I always notice with this one is the fact that this feels like we're on a ship. As a matter of fact, you could basically think of it like being on a ship, and uh, there's so many conventions in this airplane that are very ship-like. So you'll see exactly what I mean when we kind of get to it. So this is going to be our pilot seat. Now, we don't have a lot of instrumentation in front of us if you actually take a look down here. We have some farts in uh, kilometers an hour at the speed. We have our climb and our sink. We have our heading indicator. Of course, uh, coming over on this side, you can see exactly how we're doing as far as our distances goes. Again, altitudes. You actually have two different sets of altitudes, which I think is pretty wild on here. You have another altimeter here, which is going to be up in kilometers. And of course, you have a general tool for the purposes of uh, telling you what direction we're traveling in. Right now, none of these uh, needles are powered or anything, so you don't have to worry about that. Our lovely attitude indicators, of course, are located in the middle. You actually have two different types of attitude indicators. One is a rate attitude indicator, one is a conventional attitude indicator. Sitting up in front of you, of course, you have this a lovely, lovely compass here. And there's our lovely loop for the ADF antenna. And if you actually look off the front here, you can actually see what our current speed is. It's a little challenging to see, even with this level zoom here. But you can at least have a general idea of what your aircraft is achieving at this particular time. Over here on the co-pilot side, uh, you basically have a duplication of all the instruments that the pilot have. Nothing too, too crazy. Now, sitting here on the floor between you, excuse me, I zipping around here, you have a bunch of other useful tools. Uh, remember, we are a 12, 1, 2, 12 engine aircraft. And we actually have individual warning lights to tell us kind of what's going on that's working, what's going on that's not. And of course, you have two RPM gauges here. Coming down here, we have our instruments lighting. And then we have this very, very interesting little box here. Let's, uh, this is actually our tugboat. Yes, our aircraft has a tugboat. So I'm actually going to pop this sucker open, and uh, one of the switches on the left side is going to be for our Anka, which is literally our Anka, so I'm going to go ahead and deploy that right away. And then, of course, we have a Schlieboot, which is going to be our tugboat. So I'm going to go ahead and click that switch here, and what's going to happen is this little tugboat, look at how beautiful this looks here, it's just going to come out of nowhere, and he's just going to cruise right on up to us. Now, the interesting thing here is he's not going to push us from the side or anything like that. What he's actually going to do is he's going to send us a little tug rope that's going to come off the front, and he's going to give us a tug to actually make us uh, go wherever we need to. Uh, don't worry about the flashing uh, green light here. There's nothing bad here. He's just doing his little piece there. And what I'm doing now is I'm basically getting him established so that he's chilling up there. So when it does come time to actually kind of get us moving around, we'll have the ability to do so. By the way, everything opens. Uh, one of the things I love about this aircraft is they really took their time to put in every little teeny tiny little detail that they could. This might not be an incredible study level plane because the engine management is, you know, kind of typical flight sim. But I still think it's great anyway, and I don't care, kind of thing, as you'll see in a minute. All right, so that's everything up front. Uh, we're going to now make our way kind of to the middle cabin here. We can just grab this and slide it to the side. And this is going to be our navigator's piece. And it's also a good place if you need to take a quick nap, if you need to kind of sit down and relax. I love the presence of the diary and the old school navigational tools here. None of these drawers open or anything along those lines. Notice we have a sextant. Fantastic. Some instrument measuring tools. But there's one really, really useful thing here. If you come down here, this is actually going to be our current heading bug for our aircraft itself. Now, if you were to adjust this, and again, I have a little knob that I have on my little switch here, you can actually dial in into basically anything that you need to set it for. Now, the reason this is kind of useful is if, well, let's say I want to head at 30 degrees or something along those lines, you can see the difference between these two, and it acts as kind of a reference point for us if we're doing that kind of navigation here. Uh, this button is just a stress button. You can push it all you want, kind of a thing like that. The other important switch that you have back here in the navigator seat is you have a bunch of power switches right here. Now, the nice thing is they actually helped us out to tell us what each one of these are. Now, if you start clicking these switches uh, randomly, watch how uh, massively open, <laughs> watch this. Starboard's done, we can turn some lighting on, we have our navigation lights up here, and we have, isn't that so satisfying? <laughs> But you can see here that uh, we've opened this place up. We got our cargo hatches open. We got our back hatches open. Uh, please don't do this in uh, very, very nasty weather here. Otherwise, um, you're going to spoil our entire flight here because we will sink. <laughs> There's actually another switch for that in the back you're going to see later on. The nice thing here, though, is we do have our nav lights if we need to flip those on. Swipping down here, uh, we have our battery switches. Now, the way this one works is really, really straightforward. Uh, be careful that you don't grab things behind you, by the way. This is it. <coughs> 
and that will go ahead and get our batteries. You can see we're pulling less than 10 amps right away, but you can see our voltage is your, your typical 25 volts for this particular system. And now we're good to go. Coming back here, oh, this is the engine room. Engine room, as in like ship, but like no joke, the captain's up there, we're back here, kind of a thing like that. And there's a great picture online if you can see somebody standing in here. This is actually, this is about head height, if you want to get an idea for just how large this room is. And this is where you operate all 12 of the engines. I will deal with the control shenanigans in a few moments here. There's actually a little bit of work that we have to do, but that's not too bad. At the back of the engine room, of course, uh, you've got your switches for all your fuel pumps as well as your fuel valves. We also have... <laughs> jump scare. All right, so coming back here, we have one next room. Uh, this is going to be uh, the radio room, uh, if you can get the handle for it to open. And since you got to kind of hit it at an angle sort of thing when you grab onto it. Ah! Oh, come on. There it goes. It's a push-out kind of a thing. Here's the radio room. Um, the nice thing about the radio room in this particular aircraft, other than this really old-school radio that you have here, is the fact that we actually have modern radio instruments on here. We have a communication A and we have a communication B, kind of a thing like that. And we have our two options in order to actually set our frequencies. you got a handy little switch if you want to be able to see what you have. Get your big old-fashioned vacuum tube there. The other thing I really appreciate is that when you kind of come back here, you have like a duplication of you know, what time it is and everything. We also have all of our ADF stuff. We have different ranges. You can go ahead and dial this in right away. I have no NDB stations anywhere near me right now, so that's not going to work so well as far as we goes. But we do have that ability to actually do those pieces. Another thing that's really, really, really handy is if you swing back here, you have a VOR radio as well. So if I need to come here and do a particular frequency, I can just come back here and actually just crank it to the frequency that I want. Obviously, I'm a little out of range of many of these kind of stations for when we are. You can also turn the lights on if you need. But all of that material is back here in the event that you actually need to engage upon it. Next room we have, uh, this is a funky room. This room's, not that it's incomplete, but it's, um, let's see if I can open this door properly today. Sometimes it's a little challenging to open these doors. There we go. We have the auxiliary engine room. Yes, we have another engine room in this thing. And we have this really, really old school, uh, ugly looking engine here, which is like, I mean, find where the actual engine starts and like where the generator stops. Look at the big belts that it has on and everything like that. Like talk about old school. Uh, none of this works back here, which is kind of a shame because it'd be fun to get this APU sort of fired up and uh, get going here. Let me actually swing down here. You'll notice none of these switches are operative. Uh, the general rule with this aircraft is um, that if you don't need to mess with it, don't mess with it. And you'll see what I mean once you get the thing in the air. Now, of course, everybody's like, well, wasn't this thing designed to be like a luxury airplane? Yeah, it is. So what we'll do is we'll slide open the lower deck door and we'll float downstairs. Now, this is incredible. Look at these accommodations. Swing up here, you know, you've got, no joke, a bar. Uh, we have a little place to wash your hands. You've got comfortable seats, which I feel like they're not actually, yeah, they must be bolted to the floor. That would be absurd to think you'd have an airplane without bolting things to the floor. That's, you, just, you just don't do that. That's too nasty. But uh, floating back here, you can see absolutely, look at the tea set and everything. We can have you a little call. Look, somebody's already poured tea for us, uh, which is very appreciated as a pilot. You've got this little kind of seating area back here with the more traditional airliner chairs of the era. You've got a head way, way, way in the back. And of course, if you want to, you can save your own quick little buttons to go in and out if that's something that you need to do. But one thing that's really cool is if you come all the way down, you can actually go all the way down another deck. <laughs> the people who model this took the time to come all the way down here. So you can see all the stuff that we have mounted down here, which is just incredible. Honestly, this thing feels more like an airship than it feels like an actual airplane, but I'll take what I can get. So enough chat. Let's get this thing started. So uh, starting this aircraft is a lot simpler than it looks. You know, when I first sat here and said, oh, let's see if I can figure this thing out, I was like, ah, oh, panicking. But before we do that, um, let's go ahead and make a quick little uh, tugboat adjustment here to kind of get ourselves in a good spot. So I'm gonna pop off the anchor, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank on this little tugboat speed thing. You really, 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 really gotta crank on this to get the tugboat to actually start taking us along here. Like, don't be surprised if you have to really, 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 really uh, jerk on it. One thing that I like to do um, when you're doing the tugboat business is when you start cranking and he starts giving that little bit of literally a tug kind of thing you can see starting to pull us here, is what you can do is you can actually adjust where he's pointing. So if I stick my head to the side here so you can see his little mast there, if I crank this to the right, you'll actually see that he's adjusting himself to the reached. If I switch this one, I can actually take us over to the links as well, which is going to be our left, obviously, port and starboard kind of a thing. And when we're done with him, the quickest way to do that is there's this little uh, tugboat disconnection. You can just shut him off and then click that off. And what that will do is set his speed to zero, and it'll actually disappear. So what I'm actually going to do now is re-engage the anchor. All right, let's get this thing started. So like I said, starting is nothing too, too scary here. Uh, one thing we do want to do is let people around us know. I've already got the nav lights going. So we're good to go. So we're going to make our way to the engine room. 
Now, by the way, if you need a shortcut, if you press Control-5 and Control-6, you can kind of do one of these things between the different locations. The first thing we need to do is we need to confirm that we have fuel. This is actually our mixture control here. And you can see I've got fuel turned on to all of these engaged at the same time. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to float back here, and this is going to be our pumps. And now basically, just like anything, we're going to get them all rolling together. So we're going to craft pumps. Elf. Zing. Do, do, do. Position lights. We're going to flip those on, too. Let everybody know that we're getting started here. These switches here should all be up. Nah, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. And of course, we can go check our bolt meter to make sure that's okay. Obviously, we're not generating anything from either one of our generators right now. We're running off the batteries, so we're not going to see much. So engine startup on this. It's, uh, it's, it's involved, and I'll show you what I mean here. So we're going to float down here so that I can see kind of everything at the same time. We're going to crack our throttles. We're going to make sure our clutches are engaged. Yes, clutches. So in this particular engine, if we need to break the engine off, we can actually pop it off in the event that we don't want to control it that way. Next, what we're going to do is that we have our ignition timing adjustment. So there's these little tiny switches here, and what you're going to do is you're going to disengage those switches, and that will allow you to actually crank this to the starting timing position, which is good for us. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to set our magnetos. Yes, we have quite a few of these. And by the way, if you're ever in a situation where you just want to get this thing started as fast as you can, just press and hold this for three seconds. It'll get you going. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn on the two compressed air. We're going to select engine number one. We're also going to turn on the nebulizer, which is going to help us get going here. Now, this is going to be our first engine we're going to start. And the easiest way to start it, I hate to say, is you just press and hold until it makes a lot of noise. That's it. And if you take a look, yeah, you can see we're hovering at about 1,200 RPM. Bring it down. We only need about 1,000 RPM after this thing gets going. Our compressed air starts. Start fast. Now we're just going to select our next engine do the same thing. Make sure you shut this off before you move on to your next series of engines. Notice this. You see that after I've gotten all these engines started. By the way, all the engines on this side are started. After you're done starting, what you're going to do is you're going to set that back to the house, shut these off, and you're going to set all the timing in instruments back onto the normal setting. Now, if you observe, when I play with my throttle here, do you see how just those throttles are changing? The reason for that is because of the way they engineered the controls in this. Let me jump up front real fast. They have a left side and a right side of throttles here. Now, one of the easiest ways to do this, as I've showed you in a previous video, is if you go to controls, you can actually change your particular uh, profile here. So for me, I've actually created a special custom profile for it. Now you're saying, what did you do for that custom profile? Well, I did one thing. I created a single throttle axis. And uh, by doing that, it basically now means that when I push the throttle, you'll see both of those move together. Uh, that's just kind of one of those uh, little challenges that they brought in. So this is all set. Oh, these are secure, these are secure, these are secure, these are secure. All the ignition timings are set correctly. So we can just literally turn around and uh, do the same thing on the other side. Now again, don't miss any of these switches because uh, if you miss one, it will not engage kind of a thing. But look at how easy that is to crank. Let's go ahead and set these next. Definitely good for people who like to push buttons. Just like me, <laughs> always pushing buttons. All right, crank. I gotta love those compressed air starts. That's it, and we're started. Secure that. We're going to pull that back. We're going to set that back. Nebulizer comes off. We're going to set all of our timings back to the normal mode. Let me just go ahead and snap the covers to keep it so we can't accidentally. I just love the fact that you can manually adjust the timing. That just blows my mind. Now, coming back here, uh, one thing we can check too is to make sure our generator is operable. And uh, we can see that the Haupt battery is uh, definitely working perfectly fine here. So that's uh, definitely on. That's on. So we're going to check that. Check that. Looks pretty good to me. Uh, the only other thing we need to investigate is to make sure everything's uh, running and warming up. Uh, just look at how many instrument gauges we have here. Uh, one version of this aircraft did have water-cooled engines, uh, one version did have air-cooled engines. So it's interesting that they have max oil temperature. All that's listed up here, you can see it's starting to slowly come up here. We're not too warm, not too cold. This is going to be pressure, and of course we have our temperatures and things like that. It's coming up pretty nice. Uh, units per minute, units per minute. That's just RPM. Looks pretty good to me. Uh, we have to set this one. It's not going to make that much of a difference. But what we could do is switch between outlet and inlet oil so we can see how much everything is getting cooked up. 
but we don't have to worry about that too, too much. Everything other than that is uh, completely secure. So now all I have to do is uh, jump up to the front seat and now we are actually ready to go as far as takeoff and landing goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop us here. Uh, we'll pick up this video in the next one where you can kind of go through the whole process of getting this thing in the air, doing a little bit of navigation fun, and as well as trying to get this thing back on the ground, or not the ground, back in the water. Enjoy.